The Hairy Ape By Eugene O'Neill A Comedy of Ancient and Modern Life Scene 1 Scene, the fireman's forecastle of a transatlantic liner an hour after sailing from New York for the voyage across. Tiers of narrow, steel bunks, three deep, on all sides. An entrance in rear. Benches on the floor before the bunks. The room is crowded with men, shouting, cursing, laughing, singing, a confused, inchoate uproar swelling into a sort of unity, a meaning, the bewildered, furious, baffled defiance of a beast in a cage. Nearly all the men are drunk. Many bottles are passed from hand to hand. All are dressed in dungaree pants, heavy ugly shoes. Some wear singlets, but the majority are stripped to the waist. The treatment of this scene, or of any other scene in the play, should by no means be naturalistic. The effect sought after is a cramped space in the bowels of a ship, imprisoned by white steel. The lines of bunks, the upright supporting them, cross each other like the steel framework of a cage. The ceiling crushes down upon the men's heads. They cannot stand upright. This accentuates the natural stooping posture which shoveling coal and the resultant overdevelopment of back and shoulder muscles have given them. The men themselves should resemble those pictures in which the appearance of Neanderthal man is guessed at. All are hairy-chested, with long arms of tremendous power, and low, receding brows above their small, fierce, resentful eyes. All the civilized white races are represented, but except for the slight differentiation in color of hair, skin, eyes, all these men are alike. The curtain rises on a tumult of sound. Yank is seated in the foreground. He seems broader, fiercer, more truculent, more powerful, more sure of himself than the rest. They respect his superior strength, the grudging respect of fear. Then, too, he represents to them a self-expression, the very last word in what they are, their most highly developed individual. Voices, Jif me trink dear, you. Ave a wet. Salute. Gesundheit. Skoll. Drunk as a lord, God stiffen you. Here's how. Luck. Pass back that bottle, damn you. Pourin' it down his neck. Ho, froggy. Where the devil have you been? La Turenne. I hit him smash in ya, py got. Jenkins, the first, he's a rotten swine. And the coppers nabbed him, and I run. I like pure better. It don't pig head jiff you. A slut, I'm saying. She robbed me a slave. To hell with em all. You're a bloody liar. Say dot again. Commotion. Two men about to fight are pulled apart. No scrappin' now. Tonight. See who's the best man. Bloody Dutchman. Tonight on the Farrard Square. I'll bet on Dutchie. He pack a de wallop, I tell a you. Shut up, wop. No fightin', Matties. We're all chums, ain't we? A voice starts bawling a song. Beer, beer, glorious beer. Fill yourselves right up to here. Yank, for the first time seeming to take notice of the uproar about him, turns around threateningly, in a tone of contemptuous authority. Choke off dat noise. Where do you get dat beer stuff? Beer, hell. Beers for goyles, and Dutchmen. Me for some pen with a kick to it. Gimme a drink, one of you's guys. Several bottles are eagerly offered. He takes a tremendous gulp at one of them. Then, keeping the bottle in his hand, glares belligerently at the owner, who hastens to acquiesce in this robbery by saying all right oh, Yank. Keep it and have another. Yank contemptuously turns his back on the crowd again. For a second there is an embarrassed silence. Then. Voices, we must be passing the hook. She's beginning to roll to it. Six days in hell, and then Southampton. P.Y. Jesus, I wish somebody take my first batch for me. Giddin, seasick, squarehead. Drink up and forget it. What's in your bottle? Gin. 
Dots nigger trink. Absinthe. It's doped. You'll go off your chump, froggy. Cochon. Whiskey, that's the ticket. Where's Patty? Going asleep. Sing us that whiskey song, Patty. They all turn to an old, wizened Irishman who is dozing, very drunk, on the benches forward. His face is extremely monkey-like with all the sad, patient pathos of that animal in his small eyes. Sing a the song, Caruso Pat. He's getting old. The drink is too much for him. He's too drunk. Patty, blinking about him, starts to his feet resentfully, swaying, holding on to the edge of a bunk. I'm never too drunk to sing. Tis only when I'm dead to the world I'd be wishful to sing at all. With a sort of sad contempt. Whiskey Johnny, ye want. A shanty, ye want. Now that's a queer wish from the ugly like of you, God help you. But no matter. He starts to sing in a thin, nasal, doleful tone. Oh, whiskey is the life of man. Whiskey. Oh Johnny. They all join in on this. Oh, whiskey is the life of man. Whiskey for my Johnny. Again chorus. Oh, whiskey drove my old man mad. Whiskey. Oh Johnny. Oh, whiskey drove my old man mad. Whiskey for my Johnny. Yank, again turning around scornfully. Ah hell. Nick's on dat old sailing ship stuff. All dat bull's dead, see? And you're dead, too, you damned old harp, Ani you don't know it. Take it easy, see? Give us a rest. Nick's on the loud noise. With a cynical grin. Can't you see I'm trying to tea ink? All, repeating the word after him as one with same cynical amused mockery. Think. The chorus word has a brazen metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a general uproar of hard, barking laughter. Voices, don't be cracking your head with UT, Yank. You get headache, PY Yingo. One thing about it, it rhymes with drink. Ha, ha, ha. Drink, don't think. Drink, don't think. Drink, don't think. A whole chorus of voices has taken up this refrain, stamping on the floor, pounding on the benches with fists. Yank, taking a gulp from his bottle, good-naturedly. Ah right. Ken the noise. I got you the voice time. The uproar subsides. A very drunken sentimental tenor begins to sing. Far away in Canada. Far across the sea. There's a lass who fondly waits. Making a home for me. Yank, fiercely contemptuous. Shut up, you lousy boob. Where do you get that tripe? Home. Home, hell. I'll make a home for ya. I'll knock you dead. Home. Fell with home. Where do you get that tripe? This is home, see? What do you want with home? Proudly. I runned away from mine when I was a kid. Ani too glad to beat it, that was me. Home was lickings for me, that's all. But you can bet your shoit noon ain't never licked me since. Want her try it, any of yous? Ha! Huh. I guess not. In a more placated but still contemptuous tone. Goyle's waitin' for ya, huh? Ah, uh, hell. That's all tripe. Day don't wait for noon. Day double cross ya for a nickel. Day re all tarts, get me? Treat em rough, that's me. To hell wit em. Tarts, that's what, the whole bunch of em. Long, very drunk, jumps on a bench excitedly, gesticulating with a bottle in his hand. Listen, air, comrades. Yank air is right. E says this air stinkin' ship is our ohm. And E says as ohm is L. And E's right. This is L. We lives in hell, comrades, and right enough we'll die in it. Raging. And who's ter blame, 
I asks you. We ain't. We wasn't born this rotten way. All men is born free and equal. That's in the bleedin' Bible, Matties. But what do they care for the Bible, them lazy, bloated swine what travels first cabin? Them's the ones. They dragged us down, till we're any wage slaves in the bowels of a bloody ship, sweatin', burnin' up, eatin' cold dust. Hits them's ter blame, the damned capitalist Clars. There had been a gradual murmur of contemptuous resentment rising among the men until now he is interrupted by a storm of catcalls, hisses, boos, hard laughter. Voices, turn it off. Shut up. Sit down. Close a de face. Tam fool. Etc. Yank, standing up and glaring at Long. Sit down before I knock you down. Long makes haste to efface himself. Yank goes on contemptuously. The Bible, huh? The capitalist class, huh? Ah, nicks on dat Salvation Army Socialist bull. Get a soapbox. Hire a hall. Come and be saved, huh? Jerk us to Jesus, huh? Ah, G1. I've listened to lots of guys like you, see, you're all wrong. Want her know what I tea ink? Ya ain't no good for noon. You re debunk. Ya ain't got no noive, get me? You re yellow, that's what? Yellow, that's you. Say. What's dem slobs in the foist cabin got to do with us? We're better men than they are, ain't we? Sure. One of us guys could clean up the whole mob with one MIT. Put one of them down here for one watch in the stokehole, what'd happen? They'd carry him off on a stretcher. Them boys don't amount to nothing. They re just baggage. Who makes this old tub run? Ain't it us guys? Well then, we belong, don't we? We belong and they don't. That's all. A loud chorus of approval. Yank goes on, as for dis be in hell. Ah, nuts. You lost your noive, that's what. This is a man's job, get me? It belongs. It runs this tub. No stiffs need apply. But Yuri a stiff, see? Yuri yellow, that's you. Voices, with a great hard pride in them. Righto. A man's job. Talk is cheap, long. He never could hold up his end. Less than. Divil take him. Yank's right. We make it go. P.Y. God, Yank say right ting. We don't need noon crying over us. Makin, speeches. Throw him out. Yellow. Chuck him overboard. I'll break his jaw for him. They crowd around long threateningly. Yank, half good-natured again, contemptuously. Ah. Uh, Take it easy. Leave him alone. He ain't worth a punch. Drink up. Here's how, whoever owns this. He takes a long swallow from his bottle. All drink with him. In a flash all is hilarious amiability again, backslapping, loud talk, etc. Patty, who has been sitting in a blinking, melancholy daze, suddenly cries out in a voice full of old sorrow. We belong to this, you're saying. We make the ship to go, you're saying. Yera then, that almighty God have pity on us. His voice runs into the wail of a keen, he rocks back and forth on his bench. The men stare at him, startled and impressed in spite of themselves. Oh, to be back in the fine days of my youth, a cone. Oh, there was fine beautiful ships them days, clippers with tall masts touching the sky, fine strong men in them, men that was sons of the sea as if, t'was the mother that bore them. Oh, the clean skins of them, and the clear eyes, the straight backs and full chests of them. Brave men they was, and bold men surely. We'd be sailing out, bound down round the horn maybe. We'd be making sail in the dawn, with a fair breeze, singing a shanty song with no care to it. And astern the land would be sinking low and dying out, but we'd give it no heed but a laugh, and never a look behind. 
For the day that was, was enough, for we was free men, and I'm thinking, tis only slaves do be giving heed to the day that's gone or the day to come, until they're old like me. With a sort of religious exaltation. Oh, to be scudding south again with the power of the trade wind driving her unsteady through the nights and the days. Full sail on her. Nights and days. Nights when the foam of the wake would be flaming with fire, when the sky'd be blazing and winking with stars. Or the full of the moon maybe. Then you'd see her driving through the grey night, her sail stretching aloft all silver and white, not a sound on the deck, the lot of us dreaming dreams. Till you'd believe, twas no real ship at all you was on but a ghost ship like the flying Dutchman they say does be roaming the seas forevermore without touching a port. And there was the days, too. A warm sun on the clean decks. Sun warming the blood of you, and wind over the miles of shiny green ocean like strong drink to your lungs. Work, aye, hard work, but who'd mind that at all? Sure, you worked under the sky and twas work with skill and daring to it. And with the day done, in the dog watch, smoking me pipe at ease, the lookout would be raising land maybe, and we'd see the mountains of South America with the red fire of the setting sun painting their white tops and the clouds floating by them. His tone of exaltation ceases. He goes on mournfully. Yera, what's the use of talking? Tis a dead man's whisper. To yank resentfully. Twas them days men belonged to ships, not now. Twas them days a ship was part of the sea, and a man was part of a ship, and the sea joined all together and made it one. Scornfully. Is it one with this you'd be, yank, black smoke from the funnels smudging the sea? Smudging the decks, the bloody engines pounding and throbbing and shaking, with divil a sight of sun or a breath of clean air, choking our lungs with coal dust, breaking our backs and hearts in the hell of the stokehole, feeding the bloody furnace, feeding our lives along with the coal. I'm thinking, caged in by steel from a sight of the sky like bloody apes in the zoo. With a harsh laugh. Ho ho, divil mend you. Is it to belong to that you're wishing? Is it a flesh and blood wheel of the engines you'd be? Yank, who has been listening with a contemptuous sneer, barks out the answer. Sure ting. Dat's me. What about it? Paddy, as if to himself, with great sorrow. Me time is past due. That a great wave with sun in the heart of it may sweep me over the side sometime I'd be dreaming of the days that's gone. Yank, ah, uh, ye crazy mick. He springs to his feet and advances on Paddy threateningly, then stops, fighting some queer struggle within himself, lets his hands fall to his sides, contemptuously. Ah, uh, take it easy. Yuri are right, at dat. Yuri bugs, dat's all. Nutty as a cuckoo. All dat tripe you been pullin', ah, dat's all right. Ani it's dead, get me? You don't belong no more, see. You don't get the stuff. You're e too old. Disgustedly. But ah say, come up for air onct in a while, can't ya? See what's happened since you croaked. He suddenly bursts forth vehemently, growing more and more excited. Say. Sure. Sure I meant it. What the hell, say, let me talk. Hey. Hey, you old harp. Hey, use guys. Say, listen to me, wait a moment, I gotta talk, see. I belong and he don't. He's dead but I'm livin'. Listen to me. Sure I'm part of the engines. Why the hell not? Day move, don't they? Day re speed, ain't they? Day smash true, don't they? Twenty five knots a hour. Dat's goin', some. Dat's new stuff. Dat belongs. But him, he's too old. He gets dizzy. Say, listen. All dat crazy tripe about nights and days, all dat crazy tripe about stars and moons. All dat crazy tripe about suns and winds, fresh air and the rest of it, ah hell, that's all a dope dream. Hidden, the pipe of the past, that's what he's doin'. He's old and don't belong no more. 
But me, I'm young. I'm in the pink. I move with it. It, get me. I mean the ting that's the guts of all this. It plows through all the tripe he's been saying. It blows that up. It knocks that dead. It slams that off in the face of the oith. It, get me. The engines and the coal and the smoke and all the rest of it. He can't breathe and swallow coal dust, but I kin, see. That's fresh air for me. That's food for me. I'm new, get me. Hell in the stoke hole. Sure. It takes a man to work in hell. Hell, sure, that's my favorite climate. I eat it up. I get fat on it. It's me makes it hot. It's me makes it roar. It's me makes it move. Sure, Ani for me everything stops. It all goes dead, get me? The noise and smoke and all the engines movin', the wild, they stop. Deer ain't nothin', no more. That's what I'm sayin'. Everything else that makes the wild move, sumpen makes it move. It can't move without sumpen else, see? Then you get down to me. I'm at the bottom, get me. Deer ain't nothin', foither. I'm the end. I'm the start. I start sumpen and the wild moves. It, that's me, the new dat's moiterin' the old. I'm the ting in cold dat makes it boin, I'm steam and oil for the engines, I'm the ting in noise dat makes you hear it, I'm smoke and express trains and steamers and factory whistles. I'm the ting in gold dat makes it money. And I'm what makes iron into steel. Steel, that stands for the whole ting. And I'm steel, steel, steel. I'm the muscles in steel, the punch behind it. As he says this he pounds with his fist against the steel bunks. All the men, roused to a pitch of frenzied self-glorification by his speech, do likewise. There is a deafening metallic roar, through which Yank's voice can be heard bellowing. Slaves, hell. We run the whole woiks. All the rich guys dat tink they re some pen, they ain't nothing. They don't belong. But us guys, we're in the move, we're at the bottom, the whole thing is us. Patty from the start of Yank's speech has been taking one gulp after another from his bottle, at first frightenedly, as if he were afraid to listen, then desperately, as if to drown his senses, but finally has achieved complete indifferent. Even amused, drunkenness. Yank sees his lips moving. He quells the uproar with a shout. Hey, yous guys, take it easy. Wait a moment. The nutty harp is saying something. Patty, is heard now, throws his head back with a mocking burst of laughter. Ho 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 ho. Yank, drawing back his fist, with a snarl. Ah. Look out who you re given, the bark. Patty, begins to sing the Mueller of D with enormous good nature. I care for nobody, no, not I. And nobody cares for me. Yank, good natured himself in a flash, interrupts Patty with a slap on the bare back like a report. That's the stuff. Now you're re gettin' wise to some pen. Care for nobody, that's the dope. To hell with them all. And nix on nobody else carin'. I kin care for myself, get me. Eight bells sound, muffled, vibrating through the steel walls as if some enormous brazen gong were embedded in the heart of the ship. All the men jump up mechanically, file through the door silently close upon each other's heels in what is very like a prisoner's lockstep. Yank slaps Patty on the back. Our watch, ye old harp. Mockingly. Come on down in hell. Eat up the coal dust. Drink in the heat. It's it. See. Act like you liked it, you better, or croak yourself. Patty, with jovial defiance. To the devil with it. I'll not report this watch. Let them log me and be damned. I'm no slave the like of you. I'll be sitting here at me ease, and drinking, and thinking, and dreaming dreams. Yank, contemptuously. Tin kin, and dreamin', waddle that get ya. What's Tin Kin got to do with it? 
We move, don't we? Speed, ain't it? Fog, that's all you stand for. But we drive true dat, don't we? We split dat up and smash true, 25 knots a hour. Turns his back on Patty scornfully. Ah, you make me sick. You don't belong. He strides out the door in rear. Patty hums to himself, blinking drowsily. Curtain. Scene 2. Scene, two days out. A section of the promenade deck. Mildred Douglas and her aunt are discovered reclining in deck chairs. The former is a girl of twenty, slender, delicate, with a pale, pretty face marred by a self-conscious expression of disdainful superiority. She looks fretful, nervous and discontented, bored by her own anemia. Her aunt is a pompous and proud, and fat, old lady. She is a type even to the point of a double chin and lorgnettes. She is dressed pretentiously, as if afraid her face alone would never indicate her position in life. Mildred is dressed all in white. The impression to be conveyed by this scene is one of the beautiful, vivid life of the sea all about, sunshine on the deck in a great flood, the fresh sea wind blowing across it. In the midst of this, these two incongruous, artificial figures, inert and disharmonious, the elder like a grey lump of dough touched up with rouge, the younger looking as if the vitality of her stock had been sapped before she was conceived. So that she is the expression not of its life energy but merely of the artificialities that energy had won for itself in the spending. Mildred, looking up with affected dreaminess. How the black smoke swirls back against the sky. Is it not beautiful? A you enter, without looking up. I dislike smoke of any kind. Mildred, my great-grandmother smoked a pipe, a clay pipe. A u n t, ruffling. Vulgar. Mildred, she was too distant a relative to be vulgar. Time mellows pipes. A u n t, pretending boredom but irritated. Did the sociology you took up at college teach you that, to play the ghoul on every possible occasion, excavating old bones? Why not let your great-grandmother rest in her grave? Mildred, dreamily. With her pipe beside her, puffing in paradise. Ayuente, with spite. Yes, you are a natural-born ghoul. You are even getting to look like one, my dear. Mildred, in a passionless tone. I detest you, aunt. Looking at her critically. Do you know what you remind me of? Of a cold pork putting against a background of linoleum tablecloth in the kitchen of a, but the possibilities are wearisome. She closes her eyes. A you enter, with a bitter laugh. Merci for your candor. But since I am and must be your chaperone, in appearance, at least, let us patch up some sort of armed truce. For my part you are quite free to indulge any pose of eccentricity that beguiles you, as long as you observe the amenities. Mildred, drawling. The inanities. A you and going on as if she hadn't heard. After exhausting the morbid thrills of social service work on New York's east side, how they must have hated you, by the way, the poor that you made so much poorer in their own eyes, you are now bent on making your slumming international. Well, I hope Whitechapel will provide the needed nerve tonic. Do not ask me to chaperone you there, however. I told your father I would not. I loathe deformity. We will hire an army of detectives and you may investigate everything, they allow you to see. Mildred, protesting with a trace of genuine earnestness. Please do not mock at my attempts to discover how the other half lives. Give me credit for some sort of groping sincerity in that at least. I would like to help them. I would like to be some use in the world. Is it my fault I don't know how? I would like to be sincere, to touch life somewhere. With weary bitterness. But I'm afraid I have neither the vitality nor integrity. All that was burnt out in our stock before I was born. Grandfather's blast furnaces, flaming to the sky, melting steel, making millions, then father keeping those home fires burning, making more millions, and little me at the tail end of it all. I'm a waste product in the Bessemer process, like the millions. 
Or rather, I inherit the acquired trait of the byproduct, wealth, but none of the energy, none of the strength of the steel that made it. I am sired by gold and darned by it, as they say at the racetrack, damned in more ways than one, she laughs mirthlessly. A you and it unimpressed, superciliously. You seem to be going in for sincerity today. It isn't becoming to you, really, except as an obvious pose. Be as artificial as you are, I advise. There's a sort of sincerity in that, you know. And, after all, you must confess you like that better. Mildred, again affected and bored. Yes, I suppose I do. Pardon me for my outburst. When a leopard complains of its spots, it must sound rather grotesque. In a mocking tone. Purr, little leopard. Purr, scratch, tear, kill, gorge yourself and be happy, only stay in the jungle where your spots are camouflage. In a cage they make you conspicuous. Ayuente, hey, I don't know what you are talking about. Mildred, it would be rude to talk about anything to you. Let's just talk. She looks at her wrist watch. Well, thank goodness, it's about time for them to come for me. That ought to give me a new thrill, aunt. Ayuente, hey, affectedly troubled. You don't mean to say you're really going. The dirt, the heat must be frightful. Mildred, grandfather started as a puddler. I should have inherited an immunity to heat that would make a salamander shiver. It will be fun to put it to the test. Ayuente, but don't you have to have the captain's, or someone's, permission to visit the stokehole? Mildred, with a triumphant smile. I have it, both his and the chief engineer's. Oh, they didn't want to at first, in spite of my social service credentials. They didn't seem a bit anxious that I should investigate how the other half lives and works on a ship. So I had to tell them that my father, the president of Nazareth Steel, chairman of the board of directors of this line, had told me it would be all right. A U N T. he didn't. Mildred, how naive age makes one. But I said he did, aunt. I even said he had given me a letter to them, which I had lost. And they were afraid to take the chance that I might be lying. Excitedly. So it's ho. For the stokehole. The second engineer is to escort me. Looking at her watch again. It's time. And here he comes, I think. The second engineer enters, he is a husky, fine-looking man of thirty-five or so. He stops before the two and tips his cap, visibly embarrassed and ill at ease. Second engineer, Miss Douglas. Mildred, yes. Throwing off her rugs and getting to her feet. Are we all ready to start? Second engineer, in just a second, ma'am. I'm waiting for the fourth. He's coming along. Mildred, with a scornful smile. You don't care to shoulder this responsibility alone, is that it? Second engineer, forcing a smile. Two are better than one. Disturbed by her eyes, glances out to sea, blurts out. A fine day we're having. Mildred, is it? Second engineer, a nice warm breeze. Mildred, it feels cold to me. Second engineer, but it's hot enough in the sun. Mildred, not hot enough for me. I don't like nature. I was never athletic. Second engineer, forcing a smile. Well, you'll find it hot enough where you're going. Mildred, do you mean hell? Second engineer, flabbergasted, decides to laugh. Ho ho. No, I mean the stokehole. Mildred, my grandfather was a puddler. He played with boiling steel. Second engineer, all at sea, uneasily. Is that so? Hum, you'll excuse me, ma'am, but are you intending to wear that dress? Mildred, why not? Second engineer, you'll likely rub against oil and dirt. It can't be helped. Mildred, it doesn't matter. I have lots of white dresses. Second engineer, I have an old coat you might throw over. Mildred, I have fifty dresses like this. I will throw this one into the sea when I come back. 
That ought to wash it clean, don't you think? Second engineer, doggedly. There's ladders to climb down that are none too clean, and dark alleyways. Mildred, I will wear this very dress and none other. Second engineer, no offense meant. It's none of my business. I was only warning you. Mildred, warning. That sounds thrilling. Second engineer, looking down the deck, with a sigh of relief. There's the fourth now. He's waiting for us. If you'll come. Mildred, go on. I'll follow you. He goes. Mildred turns a mocking smile on her aunt. An oaf, but a handsome, virile oaf. A uente, scornfully. Poser. Mildred, take care. He said there were dark alleyways. A uente, in the same tone. Poser. Mildred, biting her lips angrily. You are right. But would that my millions were not so anemically chaste. A you and yes, for a fresh pose I have no doubt you would drag the name of Douglas in the gutter. Mildred, from which it sprang. Goodbye, aunt. Don't pray too hard that I may fall into the fiery furnace. A you and poser. Mildred, viciously. Old hag. She slaps her aunt insultingly across the face and walks off, laughing gaily. A you and screams after her. I said poser. Curtain. Scene 3. Scene, the stokehole. In the rear, the dimly outlined bulks of the furnaces and boilers. High overhead one hanging electric bulb sheds just enough light through the murky air laden with coal dust to pile up masses of shadows everywhere. A line of men, stripped to the waist, is before the furnace doors. They bend over, looking neither to right nor left, handling their shovels as if they were part of their bodies, with a strange, awkward, swinging rhythm. They use the shovels to throw open the furnace doors. Then from these fiery round holes in the black a flood of terrific light and heat pours full upon the men who are outlined in silhouette in the crouching, inhuman attitudes of chained gorillas. The men shovel with a rhythmic motion, swinging as on a pivot from the coal which lies in heaps on the floor behind to hurl it into the flaming mouths before them. There is a tumult of noise, the brazen clang of the furnace doors as they are flung open or slammed shut, the grating, teeth-gritting grind of steel against steel, of crunching coal. This clash of sound stuns one's ears with its rending dissonance. But there is order in it, rhythm, a mechanical regulated recurrence, a tempo. And rising above all, making the air hum with the quiver of liberated energy, the roar of leaping flames in the furnaces, the monotonous throbbing beat of the engines. As the curtain rises, the furnace doors are shut. The men are taking a breathing spell. One or two are arranging the coal behind them, pulling it into more accessible heaps. The others can be dimly made out leaning on their shovels in relaxed attitudes of exhaustion. Patty, from somewhere in the line, plaintively. Yera, will this devil's own watch never end? Me back is broke. I'm destroyed entirely. Yank, from the center of the line, with exuberant scorn. Ah, you make me sick. Lie down and croak, why don't you? Always be thin, that's you. Say, this is a cinch. This was made for me. It's my meat, get me. A whistle is blown, a thin, shrill note from somewhere overhead in the darkness. Yank curses without resentment. Dears to damn engineer Kraken, de whip. He tinks we're loafing. Patty, vindicatively. God stiffen him. Yank, in an exultant tone of command. Come on, use guys. Get into the game. She's gettin' hungry. Pile some grub in her. Throw it into her belly. Come on now, all of yous. Open her up. At this last all the men, who have followed his movements of getting into position, throw open their furnace doors with a deafening clang. The fiery light floods over their shoulders as they bend round for the coal. Rivulets of sooty sweat have traced maps on their backs. The enlarged muscles form bunches of high light and shadow. Yank, 
chanting a count as he shovels without seeming effort. One, two, three, his voice rising exultantly in the joy of battle. That's the stuff. Let her have it. All toe get her now. Sling it into her. Let her ride. Shoot the piece now. Call the toy on her. Drive her into it. Feel her move. Watch her smoke. Speed, that's her middle name. Give her coal, use guys. Coal, that's her booze. Drink it up, baby. Let's see you sprint. Dig in and gain a lap. Dear she go oh yes, this last in the chanting formula of the gallery gods at the six-day bike race. He slams his furnace door shut. The others do likewise with as much unison as their wearied bodies will permit. The effect is of one fiery eye after another being blotted out with a series of accompanying bangs. Patty, groaning. Me back is broke. I'm bait out, bait, there is a pause. Then the inexorable whistle sounds again from the dim regions above the electric light. There is a growl of cursing rage from all sides. Yank, shaking his fist upward, contemptuously. Take it easy dear, you. Who do you tinks runnin' this game, me or you? When I get ready, we move. Not before. When I get ready, get me. Voices, approvingly. That's the stuff. Yank tell him, P.Y. golly. Yank ain't afeard. Goot poi, Yank. Give him hell. Tell him he's a bloody swine. Bloody slave driver. Yank, contemptuously. He ain't got no noive. He's yellow, get me. All the engineers is yellow. They got streaks a mile wide. Ah, to hell with him. Let's move, use guys. We had a rest. Come on, she needs it. Give her pep. It ain't for him. Him and his whistle, they don't belong. But we belong, see. We gotta feed the baby. Come on. He turns and flings his furnace door open. They all follow his lead. At this instant the second and fourth engineers enter from the darkness on the left with Mildred between them. She starts, turns paler, her pose is crumbling, she shivers with fright in spite of the blazing heat, but forces herself to leave the engineers and take a few steps nearer the men. She is right behind Yank. All this happens quickly while the men have their backs turned. Yank, come on, use guys. He is turning to get coal when the whistle sounds again in a peremptory, irritating note. This drives Yank into a sudden fury. While the other men have turned full around and stopped dumbfounded by the spectacle of Mildred standing there in her white dress, Yank does not turn far enough to see her. Besides, his head is thrown back, he blinks upward through the murk trying to find the owner of the whistle, he brandishes his shovel murderously over his head in one hand, pounding on his chest, gorilla-like, with the other. Shouting toin off dat whistle. Come down out a deer, ye yellow, brass buttoned, Belfast bum, ye. Come down and I'll knock your brains out. Ye lousy, stinkin', yellow mud of a Catholic moiterin', bastard. Come down and I'll water ye. Pullin' dat whistle on me, huh. I'll show ye. I'll crash your skull in. I'll drive your teat down your throat. I'll slam your nose through the back of your head. I'll cut your guts out for a nickel, ye lousy boob, ye dirty, crummy, muck-eaten son of a. Suddenly he becomes conscious of all the other men staring at something directly behind his back. He whirls defensively with a snarling, murderous growl, crouching to spring, his lips drawn back over his teeth, his small eyes gleaming ferociously. He sees Mildred, like a white apparition in the full light from the open furnace doors. He glares into her eyes, turned to stone. As for her, during his speech she has listened, paralyzed with horror, terror, her whole personality crushed, beaten in, collapsed, by the terrific impact of this unknown, abysmal brutality, naked and shameless. As she looks at his gorilla face, as his eyes bore into hers, she utters a low, choking cry and shrinks away from him, 
putting both hands up before her eyes to shut out the sight of his face, to protect her own. This startles Yank to a reaction. His mouth falls open, his eyes grow bewildered. Mildred, about to faint, to the engineers, who now have her one by each arm, whimperingly. Take me away. Oh, the filthy beast. She faints. They carry her quickly back, disappearing in the darkness at the left, rear. An iron door clangs shut. Rage and bewildered fury rush back on Yank. He feels himself insulted in some unknown fashion in the very heart of his pride. He roars God damn ya. And hurls his shovel after them at the door which has just closed. It hits the steel bulkhead with a clang and falls clattering on the steel floor. From overhead the whistle sounds again in a long, angry, insistent command. Curtain. Scene 4. Scene, the fireman's forecastle. Yank's watch has just come off duty and had dinner. Their faces and bodies shine from a soap and water scrubbing but around their eyes, where a hasty dousing does not touch, the cold dust sticks like black makeup, giving them a queer, sinister expression. Yank has not washed either face or body. He stands out in contrast to them, a blackened, brooding figure. He is seated forward on a bench in the exact attitude of Rodin's, the thinker. The others, most of them smoking pipes, are staring at Yank half apprehensively, as if fearing an outburst, half amusedly, as if they saw a joke somewhere that tickled them. Voices, he ain't ate nothing. P.Y. golly, a faller gat gat grub in him. Divil a lie. Yank feed a de fire, no feed a de face. Ha ha. He ain't even washed hisself. He's forgot. Hey, Yank, you forgot to wash. Yank, sullenly. Forgot nothing. To hell with washin. Voices, it'll stick to you. It'll get under your skin. Give you the bleedin' pitch, that's what. It makes spots on you, like a leopard. Like a piebald nigger, you mean. Better wash up, Yank. You sleep better. Wash up, Yank. Wash up. Wash up. Yank, resentfully. Ah say, use guys. Let me alone. Can't you see I'm trying to tink? All, repeating the word after him as one with cynical mockery. Think. The word has a brazen, metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a chorus of hard, barking laughter. Yank, springing to his feet and glaring at them belligerently. Yes, Tink. Tink, that's what I said. What about it? They are silent, puzzled by his sudden resentment at what used to be one of his jokes. Yank sits down again in the same attitude of, the thinker. Voices, leave him alone. He's got a grouch on. Why wouldn't he? Patty, with a wink at the others. Sure I know what's the matter. Tis acy to see. He's fallen in love, I'm telling you. All, repeating the word after him as one with cynical mockery. Love. The word has a brazen, metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a chorus of hard, barking laughter. Yank, with a contemptuous snort. Love, hell. Hate, that's what. I've fallen in hate, get me? Patty, philosophically, t'would take a wise man to tell one from the other. With a bitter, ironical scorn, increasing as he goes on. But I'm telling you it's love that's in it. Sure what else but love for us poor bastes in the stokehole would be bringing a fine lady, dressed like a white quain, down a mile of ladders and steps to be having a look at us. A growl of anger goes up from all sides. Long, jumping on a bench, hectically, insulting us. Insulting us, the bloody cow. And them bloody engineers. What right as they got to be exhibitin' us s if we was bleedin' monkeys in a menagerie? Did we sign for insults to our dignity as onest workers? Is that in the ship's articles? You kin bloody well bet it ain't. But I knows why they done it. 
I asked the deck steward oh she was and e told me. Air old man's a bleeding millionaire, a bloody capitalist. E's got enough bloody gold to sink this bleeding ship. E makes arf the bloody steel in the world. E owns this bloody boat. And you and me, comrades, we're is slaves. And the skipper and mates and engineers, they're is slaves. And she's is bloody daughter and we're all her slaves, too. And she gives her orders as ow she wants to see the bloody animals below decks and down they takes her. There is a roar of rage from all sides. Yank, blinking at him bewilderedly. Say. Wait a moment. Is all that straight goods? Long, straight as string. The bleeding steward as waits on M. He told me about her. And what are we going to do, I asks her. Ave we got to swallow her insults like dogs. It ain't in the ship's articles. I tell you we got a case. We can go to law. Yank, with abysmal contempt. Hell. Law. All, repeating the word after him as one with cynical mockery. Law. The word has a brazen metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a chorus of hard, barking laughter. Long, feeling the ground slipping from under his feet, desperately. As voters and citizens we can force the bloody governments. Yank, with abysmal contempt. Hell. Governments. All, repeating the word after him as one with cynical mockery. Governments. The word has a brazen metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a chorus of hard, barking laughter. Long, hysterically. We're free and equal in the sight of God. Yank, with abysmal contempt. Hell. God. All, repeating the word after him as one with cynical mockery. God. The word has a brazen metallic quality as if their throats were phonograph horns. It is followed by a chorus of hard, barking laughter. Yank, witheringly. Ah, join the Salvation Army. All, sit down. Shut up. Damn fool. See lawyer. Long slinks back out of sight. Patty, continuing the trend of his thoughts as if he had never been interrupted, bitterly. And there she was standing behind us, and the second pointing at us like a man you'd hear in a circus would be saying, in this cage is a queerer kind of baboon than ever you'd find in darkest Africa. We roast them in their own sweat, and be damned if you won't hear some of them saying they like it. He glances scornfully at Yank. Yank, with a bewildered uncertain growl. Ah. Patty, and there was Yank roaring, curses and turning round with his shovel to brain her, and she looked at him, and him at her. Yank, slowly. She was all white. I thought she was a ghost. Sure. Patty, with heavy, biting sarcasm. Twas love at first sight, divil a doubt of it. If you'd seen the endearing look on her pale mug when she shriveled away with her hands over her eyes to shut out the sight of him. Sure, twas as if she'd seen a great hairy ape escape from the zoo. Yank, stung, with a growl of rage. Ah! Patty, and the loving way Yank heaved his shovel at the skull of her, only she was out the door. A grin breaking over his face. Twas touching, I'm telling you. It put the touch of home, swayed home in the stokehole. There is a roar of laughter from all. Yank, glaring at Patty menacingly. Ah, choke dad off, see. Patty, not heeding him, to the others. And her grab bin at the second's arm for protection. With a grotesque imitation of a woman's voice. Kiss me, engineer dear, for it's dark down here and me old man's in Wall Street making money. Hug me tight, darlin', for I'm afeard in the dark and me mother's on deck making eyes at the skipper. Another roar of laughter. Yank, threateningly. Say. What you tryin' to do, kid me, you old harp. Patty, divil a bit. Ain't I wishin' myself you brained her. Yank, fiercely. 
I'll brain her. I'll brain her yet, wait, and, see. Coming over to Patty, slowly. Say, is that what she called me, a hairy ape? Patty, she looked it at you if she didn't say the word itself. Yank, grinning horribly. Hairy ape, huh? Sure. That's the way she looked at me, all right. Hairy ape. So that's me, huh? Bursting into rage, as if she were still in front of him. Ya skinny tart. Ya white-faced bum, ya. I'll show ya who's a ape. Turning to the others, bewilderment seizing him again. Say, use guys. I was ballin' him out for pullin' the whistle on us. You heard me. And then I seen yous lookin' at Sunpen and I thought he'd sneak down to come up in back of me, and I hopped round to knock him dead with the shovel. And dear she was with the light on her. Christ, you coulda pushed me over with a finger. I was scared, get me? Sure. I thought she was a ghost, see? She was all in white like day wrap around stiffs. You seen her. Can you blame me? She didn't belong, that's what. And then when I come to and seen it was a real scoit and seen the way she was looking at me, like Patty said, Christ, I was sore, get me? I don't stand for that stuff from nobody. And I flung the shovel, Ani she beat it. Furiously. I wished it had banged her. I wished it had knocked her block off. Long, and be, anged for murder or, electrocuted. She ain't bleeding, well worth it. Yank, I don't give a damn what. I'd be square with her, wouldn't I? Tink I want her let her put some pen over on me. Tink I'm going to let her get away with that stuff. You don't know me. Noon ain't never put nothing over on me and got away with it, see, not that kind of stuff, no guy and no scoit neither. I'll fix her. Maybe she'll come down again. Voice, no chance, Yank. You scared her out of a year's growth. Yank, I scared her. Why the hell should I scare her? Who the hell is she? Ain't she the same as me? Harry Ape, huh? With his old confident bravado. I'll show her I'm better than her, if she ony knew it. I belong and she don't, see. I move and she's dead. Twenty-five knots a hour, that's me. Dad carries her but I make that. She's ony baggage. Sure. Again bewilderedly. But, Christ, she was funny looking. Did you pipe her hands? White and skinny. You could see the bones trough em. And her mush, dat was dead white, too. And her eyes, day was like day'd seen a ghost. Me, dat was. Sure. Harry ape. Ghost, huh. Look at dat arm. He extends his right arm, swelling out the great muscles. I coulda took her with dat, with just my little finger even, and broke her in two. Again bewilderedly. Say, who is dat scoit, huh? What is she? What's she come from? Who made her? Who give her the noive to look at me like that? This ting's got my goat right. I don't get her. She's new to me. What does a scoit like her mean, huh? She don't belong, get me. I can't see her. With growing anger. But one ting I'm wise to, all right, all right. Use all kin bet your show it's I'll get even with her. I'll show her if she tinks she, she grinds the organ and I'm on the string, huh? I'll fix her. Let her come down again and I'll fling her in the furnace. She'll move den. She won't shiver at nothing, den. Speed, that'll be her. She'll belong den. He grins horribly. Patty, she'll never come. She's had her belly full, I'm telling you. She'll be in bed now, I'm thinking, with ten doctors and nurses feed in her salts to clean the fear out of her. Yank, enraged. You think I made her sick, too, do ya? Just lookin' at me, huh? Harry Ape, huh? 
in a frenzy of rage. I'll fix her. I'll tell her where to get off. She'll get down on her knees and take it back or I'll bust a face off in her. Shaking one fist upward and beating on his chest with the other. I'll find ya. I'm coming, d'ya hear? I'll fix ya, god damn ya. He makes a rush for the door. Voices, stop him. He'll get shot. He'll murder her. Trip him up. Hold him. He's gone crazy. God, he's strong. Hold him down. Look out for a kick. Pin his arms. They have all piled on him and, after a fierce struggle, by sheer weight of numbers have borne him to the floor just inside the door. Patty, who has remained detached. Cape him down till he's cooled off. Scornfully. Yera, Yank, you're a great fool. Is it paying attention at all you are to the like of that skinny sow without one drop of raw blood in her? Yank, frenziedly, from the bottom of the heap. She done me doit. She done me doit, didn't she? I'll get square with her. I'll get her some way. Get offen me, use guys. Let me up. I'll show her who's a ape. Curtain. Scene V. Scene. Three weeks later. A corner of Fifth Avenue in the fifties on a fine, Sunday morning. A general atmosphere of clean, well-tidied, wide street, a flood of mellow, tempered sunshine, gentle, genteel breezes. In the rear, the show windows of two shops, a jewelry establishment on the corner, a furrier's next to it. Here the adornments of extreme wealth are tantalizingly displayed. The jeweler's window is gaudy with glittering diamonds, emeralds, rubies, pearls, etc., fashioned in ornate tiaras, crowns, necklaces, collars, etc. From each piece hangs an enormous tag from which a dollar sign and numerals in intermittent electric lights wink out the incredible prices. The same in the furriers. Rich furs of all varieties hang there bathed in a downpour of artificial light. The general effect is of a background of magnificence cheapened and made grotesque by commercialism, a background in tawdry disharmony with the clear light and sunshine on the street itself. Up the side street Yank and Long come swaggering. Long is dressed in shore clothes, wears a black Windsor tie, cloth cap. Yank is in his dirty dungarees. A fireman's cap with black peak is cocked defiantly on the side of his head. He has not shaved for days and around his fierce, resentful eyes, as around those of Long to a lesser degree, the black smudge of cold dust still sticks like makeup. They hesitate and stand together at the corner, swaggering, looking about them with a forced, defiant contempt. Long, indicating it all with an oratorical gesture. Well, ere we are. Fifth Avenue. This airs their bleedin', private lane, as you might say. Bitterly. We're trespassers, air. Proletarians keep orf the grass. Yank, dully. I don't see no grass, ya boob. Staring at the sidewalk. Clean, ain't it? Ya could eat a fried egg off in it. The white wings got some job sweepin' dis up. Looking up and down the avenue, surlily. Where's all the white collar stiffs ya said was here, and the scoits? her kind. Long, in church, blarst M. R's kin, Jesus to give, M more money. Yank, Choich, huh. I used to go to Choich Ankt, sure, when I was a kid. Me old man and woman, they made me. They never went themselves, though. Always got too big a head on Sunday morning, that was dem. With a grin. They was scrappers for fair, bought of dem. On Saturday nights when they bought got a skinful day could put up about otter been staged at the garden. When they got trough deer wasn't a chair or table with a leg under it. Or else they bought jumped on me for some pen. That was where I loined to take punishment. With a grin and a swagger. I'm a chip off in the old block, get me? Long, did your old man follow the sea? Yank, nah. Worked along shore. 
I runned away when me old lady croaked with de tremens. I helped at truckin' and in de market. Den I shipped in de stokehole. Sure. Dat belongs. The rest was nothing. Looking around him. I ain't never seen dis before. The Brooklyn waterfront, that was where I was dragged up. Taking a deep breath. This ain't so bad at that, huh? Long, not bad. Well, we pays for it with our bloody sweat, if you wants to know. Yank, with sudden angry disgust. Ah, uh, hell. I don't see noon, see, like her. All this gives me a pain. It don't belong. Say, ain't there a back room around this dump? Let's go shoot a ball. All this is too clean and quiet and dolled up, get me. It gives me a pain. Long, wait and you'll bloody well see. Yank, I don't wait for noon. I keep on the move. Say, what you drag me up here for, anyway? Tryin' to kid me, ya simp, ya. Long, you wants to get back at her, don't yer? That's what you've been saying every bloomin' her since she hinsulted yer. Yank, vehemently. Sure ting I do. Didn't I try to get even with her in Southampton? Didn't I sneak on the dock and wait for her by the gangplank? I was goin' to spit in her pale mug, see? Sure, right in her pop eyes. That woulda made me even, see? But no chanked. Dear was a whole army of plain clothes bulls around. They spotted me and gimme the bum's rush. I never seen her. But I'll get square with her yet, you watch. Furiously. The lousy tart. She thinks she can get away with water, but not with me. I'll fix her. I'll think of a way. Long, as disgusted as he dares to be. Ain't that why I brought you up, air, to show you? You've been looking at this air all affair wrong. You've been actin' and talkin' s if it was all a bleedin' personal matter between you and that bloody cow. I wants to convince you she was only a representative of her class. I wants to awaken your bloody class consciousness. Then you'll see it's her class you have got to fight, not her alone. There's a whole mob of em like her, god blind em. Yank, spitting on his hands, belligerently. The more the merrier when I get started. Bring on the gang. Long, you'll see em in Arfa M.O. when that church lets out. He turns and sees the window display in the two stores for the first time. Blimey. Look at that, will yer? They both walk back and stand looking in the jewelers. Long flies into a fury. Just look at this air bloomin' mess. Just look at it. Look at the bleedin' prices on M, more an our old bloody stokehole makes in ten voyages sweatin', in hell. And they, her and her bloody class, buys M for toys to dangle on M. One of these, air would buy scoff for a starvin' family for a year. Yank, ah, uh, cut the sob stuff. T, hell with the starvin' family. You'll be passin' the hat to me next. With naive admiration. Say, dem tings is pretty, huh? Bet ye dade hawk for a piece of change all right. Then turning away, bored. But, ah hell, what good are they? Let her have, em. They don't belong no more and she does. With a gesture of sweeping the jewelers into oblivion. All that don't count, get me? Long, who has moved to the furriers, indignantly. And I suppose this air don't count neither, skins of poor, armless animals slaughtered so as, er, and bears can keep their bleeding noses warm. Yank, who has been staring at something inside, with queer excitement. Take a slant at that. Give it to once over. Monkey fur, two thousand bucks. Bewilderedly. Is that straight goods, monkey fur? What the hell? Long, Bitterly. It's straight enough. With grim humor. They wouldn't bloody well pay that for a airy ape's skin, no, nor for the old livin' ape with all his EAD and body, 
and soul thrown in. Yank, clenching his fists, his face growing pale with rage as if the skin in the window were a personal insult. Trowin, it up in my face. Christ. I'll fix her. Long, excitedly. Church is out. Ere they come, the bleeding, swine. After a glance at Yank's lowering face, uneasily. Easy goes, comrade. Keep your bloomin', temper. Remember force defeats itself. It ain't our weapon. We must impress our demands through peaceful means, the votes of the onmarching proletarians of the bloody world. Yank, with abysmal contempt. Votes, hell. Votes is a joke, see. Votes for women. Let them do it. Long, still more uneasily. Come, now. Treat em with the proper contempt. Observe the bleeding, parasites but old your gorzas. Yank, angrily. Get away from me. Yuri yellow, that's what. Force, that's me. The punch, that's me every time, see. The crowd from church enter from the right, sauntering slowly and affectedly, their heads held stiffly up, looking neither to right nor left, talking in toneless, simpering voices. The women are rouged, calcimined, dyed, overdressed to the nth degree. The men are in Prince Albert's, high hats, spats, canes, etc. A procession of gaudy marionettes, yet with something of the relentless horror of Frankensteins in their detached, mechanical unawareness. Voices, dear Dr. Caiaphas. He is so sincere. What was the sermon? I dozed off. About the radicals, my dear, and the false doctrines that are being preached. We must organize a hundred percent American bazaar. And let everyone contribute one one hundredth percent of their income tax. What an original idea. We can devote the proceeds to rehabilitating the veil of the temple. But that has been done so many times. Yank, glaring from one to the other of them, with an insulting snort of scorn. Ha! Ha! Without seeming to see him, they make wide detours to avoid the spot where he stands in the middle of the sidewalk. Long, frightenedly. Keep your bloomin' mouth shut, I tells yer. Yank, viciously. Guan. Tell it to Sweeney. He swaggers away and deliberately lurches into a top-hatted gentleman, then glares at him pugnaciously. Say, who do you think you're bumpin'? Tink you own de oith. Gentlemen, coldly and affectedly. I beg your pardon. He has not looked at Y.N.K. and passes on without a glance, leaving him bewildered. Long, rushing up and grabbing Yank's arm. Air. Come away. This wasn't what I meant. You'll ave the bloody coppers down on us. Yank, savagely, giving him a push that sends him sprawling. Guan. Long, picks himself up, hysterically. I'll pop orf then. This ain't what I meant. And whatever the pens, you can't blame me. He slinks off left. Yank, T, hell with yous. He approaches a lady, with a vicious grin and a smirking wink. Hello, kiddo. How's every little ting? Got anything on for tonight? I know an old boiler down to the docks we kin crawl into. The lady stalks by without a look, without a change of pace. Yank turns to others, insultingly. Holy smokes, what a mug. Go hide yourself before the horses shy at ya. Gee, pipe the hiney on dat one. Say, use, you look like the stoin of a ferryboat. Paint and powder. All dolled up to kill. You look like stiffs laid out for the boneyard. Ah, gee wan, the lot of yous. You give me the eye ache. You don't belong, get me. Look at me, why don't yous dare? I belong, that's me. Pointing to a skyscraper across the street which is in process of construction, with bravado. See dat building goin' up dear. See the steel work. Steel, that's me. Yous guys live on it and tink you re some pen. 
But I'm I in it, see. I'm the hoist and engine that makes it go up. I'm it, the inside and bottom of it. Sure. I'm steel and steam and smoke and the rest of it. It moves, speed, 25 stories up, and me at the top and bottom, moving. You simps don't move. Yuri Ani dolls I winds up to see them spin. Yuri the garbage, get me, the leavens, the ashes we dump over the side. Now, what do you gotta say? But as they seem neither to see nor hear him, he flies into a fury. Bums. Pigs. Tarts. Bitches. He turns in a rage on the men, bumping viciously into them but not jarring them the least bit. Rather it is he who recoils after each collision. He keeps growling. Get off the oith. Guan, ya bum. Look where you're going, can't ya? Get out of here. Fight, why don't ya? Put up your mitts. Don't be a dog. Fight or I'll knock you dead. But, without seeming to see him, they all answer with mechanical affected politeness I beg your pardon. Then at a cry from one of the women, they all scurry to the furrier's window. The woman, ecstatically, with a gasp of delight. Monkey fur. The whole crowd of men and women chorus after her in the same tone of affected delight. Monkey fur. Yank, with a jerk of his head back on his shoulders, as if he had received a punch full in the face, raging. I see ya, all in white. I see ya, ya white-faced tart, ya. Harry ape, huh. I'll Harry ape ya. He bends down and grips at the street curbing as if to pluck it out and hurl it. Foiled in this, snarling with passion, he leaps to the lamppost on the corner and tries to pull it up for a club. Just at that moment a bus is heard rumbling up. A fat, high-hatted, spatted gentleman runs out from the side street. He calls out plaintively, Bus. Bus. Stop there, and runs full tilt into the bending, straining YNK, who is bowled off his balance. Yank, seeing a fight, with a roar of joy as he springs to his feet. At last. Bus, huh. I'll bust ya. He lets drive a terrific swing, his fist landing full on the fat gentleman's face. But the gentleman stands unmoved as if nothing had happened. Gentlemen, I beg your pardon. Then irritably. You have made me lose my bus. He claps his hands and begins to scream officer. Officer. Many police whistles shrill out on the instant and a whole platoon of policemen rush in on YNK from all sides. He tries to fight but is clubbed to the pavement and fallen upon. The crowd at the window have not moved or noticed this disturbance. The clanging gong of the patrol wagon approaches with a clamoring din. Curtain. Scene 6. Scene, night of the following day. A row of cells in the prison on Blackwell's Island. The cells extend back diagonally from right front to left rear. They do not stop but disappear in the dark background as if they ran on, numberless, into infinity. One electric bulb from the low ceiling of the narrow corridor sheds its light through the heavy steel bars of the cell at the extreme front and reveals part of the interior. Yank can be seen within, crouched on the edge of his cot in the attitude of Rodin's, the thinker. His face is spotted with black and blue bruises. A blood-stained bandage is wrapped around his head. Yank suddenly starting as if awakening from a dream, reaches out and shakes the bars, aloud to himself, wonderingly. Steel. This is the zoo, huh? A burst of hard, barking laughter comes from the unseen occupants of the cells, runs back down the tier, and abruptly ceases. Voices, mockingly. The zoo. That's a new name for this coop, a damn good name. Steel, eh? You said a mouthful. This is the old iron house. Who is that boob talkin'? He's the bloke they brung in out of his head. The bulls had beat him up fierce. Yank, dully. I must have been dreamin'. I thought I was in a cage at the zoo, but the apes don't talk, do they? Voices, with mocking laughter. 
You're in a cage all right. A coop. A pen. A sty. A kennel. Hard laughter, a pause. Say, guy. Who are you? No, never mind lying. What are you? Yes, tell us your sad story. What's your game? What did they judge you for? Yank, Dolly. I was a fireman, stoken on the liners. Then with sudden rage, rattling his cell bars. I'm a hairy ape, get me? And I'll bust yous all in the jaw if you don't lay off kidding me. Voices, ha. Huh? You're a hard-boiled duck ain't you? When you spit, it bounces. Laughter. Ah, can it? He's a regular guy. Ain't you? What did he say he was, a ape? Yank, defiantly. Sure ting. Ain't that what yous all are, apes? A silence. Then a furious rattling of bars from down the corridor. A voice, thick with rage. I'll show ya who's a ape, ya bum. Voices, SSSH. Mix. Can the noise. Piano. You'll have the guard down on us. Yank, scornfully. The guard? You mean the keeper, don't ya? Angry exclamations from all the cells. Voice, placatingly. Ah, don't pay no attention to him. He's off his nut from the beaten up he got. Say, you guy. We're waiting to hear what they landed you for, or ain't you tellin'? Yank, sure, I'll tell yous. Sure. Why the hell not? Ani, yous won't get me. Nobody gets me but me, see? I started to tell the judge and all he says was, toity days to tink it over. Tink it over. Christ, that's all I been doin' for weeks. After a pause. I was trying to get even with someone, see, someone dat done me doit. Voices, cynically. The old stuff, I bet. You're Goyle, huh? Give you the double cross, huh? That's them every time. Did you beat up the otter guy? Yank, disgustedly, ah, you're all wrong. Sure dear was a scoid in it, but not what yous mean, not that old tripe. This was a new kind of scoit. She was dolled up all in white, in the stoke hole. I thought she was a ghost. Sure. A pause. Voices, whispering. Gee, he's still nutty. Let him rave. It's fun listening. Yank, unheeding, groping in his thoughts. Her hands, day was skinny and white like day wasn't real but painted on some pen. Deer was a million miles from me to her, twenty-five knots a hour. She was like some dead ting the cat brung in. Sure, that's what. She didn't belong. She belonged in the window of a toy store, or on the top of a garbage can, see. Sure. He breaks out angrily. But would you believe it, she had the noive to do me doit. She lampied me like she was seeing, some pen broke loose from the menagerie. Christ, yet otter seen her eyes. He rattles the bars of his cell furiously. But I'll get back at her yet, you watch. And if I can't find her I'll take it out on the gang she runs with. I'm wise to where day hangs out now. I'll show her who belongs. I'll show her who's in the move and who ain't. You watch my smoke. Voices, serious and joking. That's the talkin'. Take her for all she's got. What was this dame, anyway? Who was she, eh? Yank, I dunno. First cabin stiff. Her old man's a millionaire, Day says, name of Douglas. Voices, Douglas. That's the president of the Steel Trust, I bet. Sure. I seen his mug in the papers. He's filthy with dough. Voice, hey, feller, take a tip from me. If you want to get back at that dame, you better join the Wobblies. You'll get some action then. Yank, Wobblies. What the hell's that? 
Voice, ain't you ever heard of the I, W, W. Yank, nah. What is it? Voice, a gang of blokes, a tough gang. I been reading about M today in the paper. The guard give me the Sunday Times. There's a long spiel about M. It's from a speech made in the Senate by a guy named Senator Queen. He is in the cell next to Yanks. There is a rustling of paper. Wait till I see if I got light enough and I'll read you. Listen. He reads, there is a menace existing in this country today which threatens the vitals of our fair republic, as foul a menace against the very lifeblood of the American eagle as was the foul conspiracy of Catiline against the eagles of ancient. Rome. Voice, disgustedly. Ah hell. Tell him to salt the tail of that eagle. Voice, reading, I refer to that devil's brew of rascals, jailbirds, murderers and cutthroats who libel all honest working men by calling themselves the industrial workers of the world. But in the light of their nefarious plots, I call them the industrious wreckers of the world. Yank, with vengeful satisfaction. Wreckers, that's the right dope. That belongs. Me for dem. Voice, SSSH. Reading. This fiendish organization is a foul ulcer on the fair body of our democracy. Voice, democracy, hell. Give him the Boyd, fellers, the raspberry. They do. Voice, SSSH. Reading, like Cato, I say to this Senate, the I, W, W, must be destroyed. For they represent an ever-present dagger pointed at the heart of the greatest nation the world has ever known, where all men are born free and equal, with equal opportunities to all, where the founding fathers have guaranteed to each one happiness. Where truth, honor, liberty, justice, and the brotherhood of man are a religion absorbed with one's mother's milk, taught at our father's knee, sealed, signed, and stamped upon in the glorious constitution of these United States. A perfect storm of hisses, catcalls, boos, and hard laughter. Voices, scornfully. Hurrah for the Fort of July. Pass the hat. Liberty. Justice. Honor. Opportunity. Brotherhood. All, with abysmal scorn. Ah, hell. Voice, give that Queen Senator guy the bark. All togetter now, one, two, three, a terrific chorus of barking and yapping. Guard, from a distance. Quiet there, use, or I'll get the hose. The noise subsides. Yank, with growling rage. I'd like to catch that senator guy alone for a second. I'd loin him some trut. Voice, SSH. Here's where he gets down to cases on the wobblies. Reads, they plot with fire in one hand and dynamite in the other. They stop not before murder to gain their ends, nor at the outraging of defenseless womanhood. They would tear down society, put the lowest scum in the seats of the mighty, turn almighty God's revealed plan for the world topsy-turvy, and make of our sweet and lovely civilization a shambles, a desolation where man, God's masterpiece, would soon degenerate back to the ape. Voice, to Wei and K. Hey, you guy. There's your ape stuff again. Yank, with a growl of fury. I got him. So they blow up tings, do they? They turn tings round, do they? Hey, lend me dat paper, will ya? Voice, sure. Give it to him. Ani keep it to yourself, see. We don't want her listen to no more of that slop. Voice, here you are. Hide it under your mattress. Yank, reaching out. Tanks. I can't read much but I can manage. He sits, the paper in the hand at his side, in the attitude of Rodin's, the thinker. A pause. Several snores from down the corridor. Suddenly Y.N.K. jumps to his feet with a furious groan as if some appalling thought had crashed on him, bewilderedly. Sure, her old man, president of the Steel Trust, makes half to steel in the world, steel, where I taught I belonged, drivin', true, movin', in dat, to make her, 
and cage me in for her to spit on. Christ, he shakes the bars of his cell door till the whole tear trembles. Irritated, protesting exclamations from those awakened or trying to get to sleep. He made dis, dis cage. Steel. IT don't belong, that's what. Cages, cells, locks, bolts, bars, that's what it means, holding me down with him at the top. But I'll drive true. Fire, that melts it. I'll be fire, under the heap, fire that never goes out, hot as hell, breaking out in the night, while he has been saying this last he has shaken his cell door to a clanging accompaniment. As he comes to the breaking out he seizes one bar with both hands and, putting his two feet up against the other so that his position is parallel to the floor like a monkey's, he gives a great wrench backwards. The bar bends like a licorice stick under his tremendous strength. Just at this moment the prison guard rushes in, dragging a hose behind him. Guard, angrily. I'll loin use bums to wake me up. Sees Wen K. Hello, it's you, huh? Got the DT. S, hey. Well, I'll cure M. I'll drown your snakes for ya. Noticing the bar. Hell, look at that bar bended. Ani a bug is strong enough for dat. Yank, glaring at him. Or a hairy ape, ya big yellow bum. Look out. Here I come. He grabs another bar. Guard, scared now, yelling off left. Toin the who's on, Ben, full pressure. And call the others, and a straight jacket. The curtain is falling. As it hides YNK from view, there is a splattering smash as the stream of water hits the steel of Yank's cell. Curtain. Scene 7. Scene, nearly a month later. An I, W, W. Local near the waterfront, showing the interior of a front room on the ground floor, and the street outside. Moonlight on the narrow street, buildings massed in black shadow. The interior of the room, which is general assembly room, office, and reading room, resembles some dingy settlement boys club. A desk and high stool are in one corner. A table with papers, stacks of pamphlets, chairs about it, is at center. The whole is decidedly cheap, banal, commonplace and unmysterious as a room could well be. The secretary is perched on the stool making entries in a large ledger. An eye shade casts his face into shadows. Eight or ten men, longshoremen, iron workers, and the like, are grouped about the table. Two are playing checkers. One is writing a letter. Most of them are smoking pipes. A big signboard is on the wall at the rear, Industrial Workers of the World, Local Number 57. Yank, comes down the street outside. He is dressed as in Scene 5. He moves cautiously, mysteriously. He comes to a point opposite the door. Tiptoes softly up to it, listens, is impressed by the silence within, knocks carefully, as if he were guessing at the password to some secret rite. Listens. No answer. Knocks again a bit louder. No answer. Knocks impatiently, much louder. Secretary, turning around on his stool. What the devil is that, someone knocking? Shouts come in, why don't you? All the men in the room look up. Yank opens the door slowly, gingerly, as if afraid of an ambush. He looks around for secret doors, mystery, is taken aback by the commonplaceness of the room and the men in it, thinks he may have gotten in the wrong place, then sees the signboard on the wall and is reassured. Yank, blurts out. Hello. Men, reservedly. Hello. Yank, more easily. I thought I bumped into the wrong dump. Secretary, scrutinizing him carefully. Maybe you have. Are you a member? Yank, nah, not yet. That's what I come for, to join. Secretary, that's easy. What's your job, Longshore? Yank, nah. Fireman, stoker on the liners. Secretary, with satisfaction. Welcome to our city. 
glad to know you people are waking up at last. We haven't got many members in your line. Yank, nah. Dairy all dead to the world. Secretary, well, you can help to wake M. What's your name? I'll make out your card. Yank, confused. Name. Lemme tink. Secretary, sharply. Don't you know your own name? Yank, sure, but I've been just Yank for so long, Bob, that's it, Bob Smith. Secretary, writing. Robert Smith. Fills out the rest of card. Here you are. Cost you half a dollar. Yank, is that all, for bits? That's easy. Gives the secretary the money. Secretary, throwing it in drawer. Thanks. Well, make yourself at home. No introductions needed. There's literature on the table. Take some of those pamphlets with you to distribute aboard ship. They may bring results. Sow the seed, only go about it right. Don't get caught and fired. We got plenty out of work. What we need is men who can hold their jobs, and work for us at the same time. Yank, sure. But he still stands, embarrassed and uneasy. Secretary, looking at him, curiously. What did you knock for? Think we had a coon in uniform to open doors. Yank, nah. I thought it was locked, and dat yet wanter give me the once over true a peephole or some pen to see if I was right. Secretary, alert and suspicious but with an easy laugh. Think we were running a crap game? That door is never locked. What put that in your nut? Yank, with a knowing grin, convinced that this is all camouflage, a part of the secrecy. This burg is full of bulls, ain't it? Secretary, sharply. What have the cops got to do with us? We're breaking no laws. Yank, with a knowing wink. Sure. Use wooden for royals. Sure. I'm wise to dat. Secretary, you seem to be wise to a lot of stuff none of us knows about. Yank, with another wink. Ah, uh, that's our right, see. Then made a bit resentful by the suspicious glances from all sides. Ah, uh, can it? Yous needn't put me true to toy degree. Can't you see I belong? Sure. I'm Reg Lar. I'll stick, get me? I'll shoot the woiks for yous. That's why I wanted to join in. Secretary, breezily, feeling him out. That's the right spirit. Only are you sure you understand what you've joined? It's all plain and above board, still, some guys get a wrong slant on us. Sharply. What's your notion of the purpose of the I, W, W? Yank, ah, uh, I know all about it. Secretary, sarcastically. Well, give us some of your valuable information. Yank, cunningly. I know enough not to speak out of my toyne. Then resentfully again. Ah, uh, say. I'm Reg Lar. I'm wise to the game. I know you got to watch your step with a stranger. For all yous know, I might be a plainclothes dick, or some pen, that's what you're e tin kin, huh? Ah, uh, forget it. I belong, see. Ask any guy down to the docks if I don't. Secretary, who said you didn't? Yank, after I'm initiated, I'll show ya. Secretary, astounded. Initiated? There's no initiation. Yank, disappointed. Ain't there no password, no grip nor nothing. Secretary, what did you think this is, the Elks, or the Black Hand? Yank, the Elks, hell. The Black Hand, dairy a lot of yellow backstick in, Janice. Nah. This is a man's gang, ain't it? Secretary, you said it. That's why we stand on our two feet in the open. We got no secrets. Yank, surprised but admiringly. You mean to say you always run wide open, like this? Secretary, exactly. Yank, then you sure got your noive with yous. Secretary, sharply. 
just what was it made you want to join us? Come out with that straight. Yank, you call me. Well, I got noive, too. Here's my hand. You want to blow things up, don't you? Well, that's me. I belong. Secretary, with pretended carelessness. You mean change the unequal conditions of society by legitimate direct action, or with dynamite? Yank, dynamite. Blow it off in the oith, steel, all the cages, all the factories, steamers, buildings, jails, the steel trust and all that makes it go. Secretary, so, that's your idea, eh? And did you have any special job in that line you wanted to propose to us? He makes a sign to the men, who get up cautiously one by one and group behind YNK. Yank, boldly. Sure, I'll come out with it. I'll show yous I'm one of the gang. Dear's that millionaire guy, Douglas. Secretary, President of the Steel Trust, you mean? Do you want to assassinate him? Yank, nah, that don't get you nothing. I mean blow up the factory, the woiks, where he makes the steel. That's what I'm after, to blow up the steel, knock all the steel in the world up to the moon. That'll fix things. Eagerly, with a touch of bravado. I'll do it by me lonesome. I'll show ya. Tell me where his woiks is, how to get there, all the dope. Gimme the stuff, the old butter, and watch me do the rest. Watch the smoke and see it move. I don't give a damn if they nab me, long as it's done. I'll soive life for it, and give them the laugh. Half to himself. And I'll write her a letter and tell her the hairy ape done it. Daddle square tings. Secretary, stepping away from YNK. Very interesting. He gives a signal. The men, huskies all, throw themselves on YNK and before he knows it they have his legs and arms pinioned. But he is too flabbergasted to make a struggle, anyway. They feel him over for weapons. Man, no gat, no knife. Shall we give him what's what and put the boots to him? Secretary, no. He isn't worth the trouble we'd get into. He's too stupid. He comes closer and laughs mockingly in YNK's face. Ho ho. By God, this is the biggest joke they've put up on us yet. Hey, you joke. Who sent you, Burns or Pinkerton? No, by God, you're such a bonehead I'll bet you're in the secret service. Well, you dirty spy, you rotten agent provocator, you can go back and tell whatever skunk is paying you blood money for betraying your brothers that he's wasting his coin. You couldn't catch a cold. And tell him that all he'll ever get on us, or ever has got, is just his own sneaking plots that he's framed up to put us in jail. We are what our manifesto says we are, neither more or less, and we'll give him a copy of that any time he calls. And as for you, he glares scornfully at Y.A.N.K., who is sunk in an oblivious stupor. Oh, hell, what's the use of talking? You're a brainless ape. Yank, aroused by the word to fierce but futile struggles. What's dat, Yashini bum, ya? Yeah. Secretary, throw him out, boys. In spite of his struggles, this is done with gusto and eclat. Propelled by several parting kicks, Yank lands sprawling in the middle of the narrow cobbled street. With a growl he starts to get up and storm the closed door, but stops bewildered by the confusion in his brain, pathetically impotent. He sits there, brooding, in as near to the attitude of Rodin's thinker as he can get in his position. Yank, bitterly. So dem boids don't think I belong, neither. Ah, to hell with em. Dairy in the wrong pew, the same old bull, soapboxes and Salvation Army, no guts. Cut out an hour often the job a day and make me happy. Gimme a dollar more a day and make me happy. Tree square a day, and cauliflowers in the front yard, equal rights, a woman and kids, a lousy vote, and I'm all fixed for Jesus, huh? Ah, hell. What does that get ya? This ting's in your inside, but it ain't your belly. Feed in your face, sinkers and coffee, that don't touch it. 
It's way down, at the bottom. You can't grab it, and you can't stop it. It moves, and everything moves. It stops and the whole world stops. That's me now, I don't tick, see, I'm a busted Ingersoll, that's what. Steel was me, and I owned the world. Now I ain't steel, and the world owns me. Ah, hell. I can't see, it's all dark, get me. It's all wrong. He turns a bitter mocking face up like an ape gibbering at the moon. Say, use up dear, man in the moon, you look so wise, gimme the answer, huh? Slip me the inside dope, the information right from the stable, where do I get off at, huh? A policeman, who has come up the street in time to hear this last, with grim humor. You'll get off at the station, you boob, if you don't get up out of that and keep moving. Yank, looking up at him, with a hard, bitter laugh. Sure. Lock me up. Put me in a cage. That's the Ani answer you know. Guan, lock me up. Policeman, what you been doing? Yank, enough to gimme life for. I was born, see. Sure, that's the charge. Write it in the blotter. I was born, get me. Policeman, jocosely. God pity your old woman. Then matter of fact. But I've no time for kidding. You're soused. I'd run you in but it's too long a walk to the station. Come on now, get up, or I'll fan your ears with this club. Beat it now. He hauls YNK to his feet. Yank, in a vague mocking tone. Say, where do I go from here? Policeman, giving him a push, with a grin, indifferently. Go to hell. Curtain. Scene 8. Scene, twilight of the next day. The monkey house at the zoo. One spot of clear gray light falls on the front of one cage so that the interior can be seen. The other cages are vague, shrouded in shadow from which chatterings pitched in a conversational tone can be heard. On the one cage a sign from which the word, gorilla, stands out. The gigantic animal himself is seen squatting on his haunches on a bench in much the same attitude as Rodan's, thinker. Yank enters from the left. Immediately a chorus of angry chattering and screeching breaks out. The gorilla turns his eyes but makes no sound or move. Yank, with a hard, bitter laugh. Welcome to your city, huh? Hail, hail, the gang's all here. At the sound of his voice the chattering dies away into an attentive silence. Yank walks up to the gorilla's cage and, leaning over the railing, stares in at its occupant, who stares back at him, silent and motionless. There is a pause of dead stillness. Then Yank begins to talk in a friendly confidential tone, half mockingly, but with a deep undercurrent of sympathy. Say, you're some hard-looking guy, ain't ya? I seen lots of tough nuts that the gang called gorillas, but you read the foist real one I ever seen. Some chest you got, and shoulders, and dem arms and mitts. I bet you got a punch in either fist that it knock em all silly. This with genuine admiration. The gorilla, as if he understood, stands upright, swelling out his chest and pounding on it with his fist. Yank grins sympathetically. Sure, I get ya. You challenged the whole world, huh? You got what I was saying even if you muffed the woids. Then bitterness creeping in. And why wouldn't you get me? Ain't we both members of the same club, the hairy apes? They stare at each other, a pause, then YNK goes on slowly and bitterly. So you read what she seen when she looked at me, the white-faced tart. I was you to her, get me? Ani out of the cage, broke out free to water her, see? Sure. That's what she taught. She wasn't wise that I was in a cage, too, worser than yours, sure, a damn sight, cause you got some chanked to bust loose, but me, he grows confused. Ah, hell. It's all wrong, ain't it? A pause. I suppose you want her know what I'm doing, here, huh? I been warm in a bench down to the battery, ever since last night. 
Sure. I seen the sun come up. Dat was pretty, too, all red and pink and green. I was looking at the skyscrapers, steel, and all the ships coming in, sailing out, all over the oith, and day was steel, too. The sun was warm, day wasn't no clouds, and deer was a breeze blowing. Sure, it was great stuff. I got it all right, what Patty said about dat being the right dope, Ani I couldn't get eye in it, see. I couldn't belong in dat. It was over my head. And I kept tin kin, and den I beat it up here to see what yous was like. And I waited till day was all gone to get you alone. Say, how do you feel sittin' in dat pen all the time, havin' to stand for him comin' and starin' at ya, the white-faced, skinny tarts and the boobs what marry em, makin' fun of ya, Logan at ya, gettin' scared of ya, damn em. He pounds on the rail with his fist. The gorilla rattles the bars of his cage and snarls. All the other monkeys set up an angry chattering in the darkness. Yank goes on excitedly. Sure. That's the way it hits me, too. Ani you're lucky, see? You don't belong with M and you know it. But me, I belong with M, but I don't, see? They don't belong with me, that's what. Get me? Tin Kin is hard, he passes one hand across his forehead with a painful gesture. The gorilla growls impatiently. Yank goes on gropingly. It's this way, what I'm driving at. Yous can sit and dope dream in the past, green woods, the jungle and the rest of it. Den you belong and they don't. Den you kin laugh at them, see? You read the champ of the world. But me, I ain't got no past to tink in, nor nothin' that's comin', ony what's now, and dat don't belong. Sure, you're the best off. You can't tink, can ya? You can't talk neither. But I kin make a bluff at talkin' and tin kin, a most get away with it, a most, and that's where the joker comes in. He laughs. I ain't on oith and I ain't in heaven, get me? I'm in the middle tryin' to separate M, Takin, all the voiced punches from bot, of M. Maybe that's what they call hell, huh? But you, Yuri at the bottom. You belong. Sure. You read the Ani one in the world that does, you lucky stiff. The gorilla growls proudly. And that's why they got her put you in a cage, see? The gorilla roars angrily. Sure. You get me. It beats it when you try to tink it or talk it, it's way down, deep, behind, you and me we feel it. Sure. But, members of this club. He laughs, then in a savage tone. What the hell? T, hell with it. A little action, that's our meat. That belongs. Knock, hem down and keep bustin' em till day croaks you with a gat, with steel. Sure. Are you game? Davy looked at yous, ain't day, in a cage. Wanter get even. Wanter wind up like a sport stead of croaking, slow in deer. The gorilla roars an emphatic affirmative. Yank goes on with a sort of furious exultation. Sure. Yuri Reglar. You'll stick to the finish. Me and you, huh, bot, members of this club. We'll put up one last star bout that'll knock em often their seats. They'll have to make the cages stronger after we're true. The gorilla is straining at his bars, growling, hopping from one foot to the other. Yank takes a jimmy from under his coat and forces the lock on the cage door. He throws this open. Pardon from the governor. Step out and shake hands. I'll take you for a walk down Fifth Avenue. We'll knock him off in the oith and croak with the band playing. Come on, brother. The gorilla scrambles gingerly out of his cage. Goes to YNK and stands looking at him. Yank keeps his mocking tone, holds out his hand. Shake, the secret grip of our order. Something, the tone of mockery, perhaps, suddenly enrages the animal. 
With a spring he wraps his huge arms around YNK in a murderous hug. There is a crackling snap of crushed ribs, a gasping cry, still mocking, from YNK. Hey, I didn't say, kiss me. The gorilla lets the crushed body slip to the floor, stands over it uncertainly, considering. Then picks it up, throws it in the cage, shuts the door, and shuffles off menacingly into the darkness at left. A great uproar of frightened chattering and whimpering comes from the other cages. Then YNK moves, groaning, opening his eyes, and there is silence. He mutters painfully. Say, they ought to match him, with Zipsko. He got me, all right. I'm true. Even him didn't think I belonged. Then, with sudden passionate despair. Christ, where do I get off at? Where do I fit in? Checking himself as suddenly. Ah, what the hell? No squaken, see. No quit tin, get me. Croak with your boots on. He grabs hold of the bars of the cage and hauls himself painfully to his feet, looks around him bewilderedly, forces a mocking laugh. In the cage, huh? In the strident tones of a circus barker. Ladies and gents, step forward and take a slant at the one and only, his voice weakening, one and original, hairy ape from the wilds of, he slips in a heap on the floor and dies. The monkeys set up a chattering, whimpering wail. And, perhaps, the hairy ape at last belongs. <laughs>